Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and welcome to the 33rd episode of my second 1 billion iron ingot challenge. In today's episode, I'm going to set up some nuclear reactors from the mod Industrial Craft 2. So let's go over the recipes real fast. I actually have uh, most of the stuff I will need today already made up, and that's because I need a lot of stuff for this episode. So let's actually go over the recipes. So for the nuclear reactor, I am using this recipe right here. Uh, we need several things. First off, I already have made advanced circuits. That's not a big deal. Generators, I'm using this recipe right here. So not a big deal. I've made all this stuff before. Uh, these dense lead plates are made in the compressor, which I made last episode. Um, not the pressurizer. I could use the pressurizer, I guess. But I am using the compressor to make the uh, dense lead plates. And for the reactor chambers, it's pretty simple. Just some lead plates around basic machine casings. So that's the recipe there. And then uh, I also am going to need some heat vents later on in the re in the episode. So the heat vents I will be using today are the component heat vent and the advanced heat vent. Uh, the component heat vents are made like this. Some tin plates and iron bars around heat a regular heat vent, which is made like this. Iron bars, iron plates, and a motor. And then the advanced heat vents are made with iron bars, diamond, and two heat vents each. So all that stuff is crafting, either crafting up or has been crafted up already. So let's go and get started. Now I have this building built right here, and I have most, I have it kind of plumbed right now. I have the conduit laid down. I have the item duct laid down that I will need, and I have the glass fiber cable laid down that I will need. But I haven't configured anything yet. So uh, next step is actually the laying down the nuclear reactor itself so the reactors will go right here and i will be adding reactor chambers to them basically what adding reactor chambers does is it unlocks another column of uh, area that i can put items in as you can see all these are x'd out right now but by adding one reactor chamber to each of these reactors i will have four columns to play with rather than three and that is critical to the design that i'm going to be using so I actually want all of my reactors to be up against the item duct here, and then the, re the reactor chambers that I will be adding onto them will be right beside them in the space like right here. And then that will be what is actually connected to the glass fiber cable, which will carry the energy to uh, mass fabricator setup that I may or may not get to in today's episode. I'm kind of thinking I won't, but I don't know that for sure. Okay, so there we go. Um, if you didn't notice before, I do have ME interfaces down here. I have one uh, over there, and then I have one over here. And that will be kind of how I am getting all of the items uh, moved in and out of the reactors. But we'll get there when we get there. The next step is actually going to be to put some heat vents into these reactors. So let's grab some heat vents. And I need the component heat vents for right now. I will not need the advanced heat vents until a little bit later because of how I'm going to run these reactors. So the pattern that I'm going to be using is a pattern like this. And I'm actually going to do this for all of the reactors that I have. So that's going to take a little while. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. And once I have all of that done, I will be right back. And I'm finally done configuring these reactors to have heat vents in this pattern. All of them are like that. The next thing I need to do is I need to grab some fuel rods to actually put in them. And I have those in this system right here. And so let's go ahead and grab those. I'm going to be using these dual fuel rods. So let's go ahead and just grab three stacks. I'm not sure exactly how many I will actually need. I think there are spiders on top of that building. So I'm going to run. And then what I need to do here is first off on this ME interface what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to always hold 64 dual fuel rods of uranium and so this ME interface is connected up to that applied energistics ME system right here uh, not my main system it is the system that creates the fuel rods and then will reprocess them in the future but uh, for right now it will just uh, be kicking fuel rods to over here so that it will always have them and that is for when I go ahead and set up the automatic fueling mechanism for the reactors in the future, or later in this episode, I guess. So what I'm going to do right now is I need to put in fuel rods in this pattern in all of the reactors. 
and that's gonna also take a little while so i'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and then i will be right back okay now all of the reactors have fuel in them the next thing is i actually need to turn these on now obviously this is not the final form i will not have any uh, empty areas in the reactor once i have the reactors completely uh, ready to go but for right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to preheat these reactors and that is because later on when i use mox fuel rods rather than the uranium fuel rods uh, the mox fuel rods behave a little bit differently if the reactor actually has some core temperature or uh, core heat uh, the more core heat, the more efficient the MOX, rod, the MOX fuel rods are, so they produce more power. So uh, in preparation for that, I am going to go ahead and preheat the reactors because I can preheat the reactors once and then they will have that temperature for the end of, until the end of time, at least uh, the way I set up my nuclear reactors. So what I need to do to actually turn these guys on is to give them a redstone signal. And to do that, I have levers over here, but I don't have anything configured yet because I need to grab some redstone relays. Um, and let's just type in relay here, and then I should be able to grab those. I will need more than that. So let's go ahead and grab some more. Shouldn't take too, too long for those to craft up. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to actually have two different switches. I think uh, for right now, I'm just going to use this switch over here. It needs to be redstone input on the red channel. And this one, let's go ahead and make it the green channel. We will have it, you know what? Let's just have them both be red channel for right now. They are both inputs, so I can flip either one. And once I set up my redstone relays over here, I will be able to, whoops, uh, get, this, get these reactors to turn on. And let's go ahead and make sure I haven't inadvertently turned any of these on. Because that would be bad. Because uh, they would explode because they don't have proper cooling at this point. If they were left on for too long, that is. So I need the rest of my relays. There they are. And I need them attached to each of the reactors in turn. Okay, so now what I need to do with these relays is all of the ones against the reactors, I need to turn to redstone output. And this is going to take just a little while, so once again, I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera, and once I have that done, I will be right back. Now that all of my redstone relays are properly configured, I can go back here, flip a switch, and all the reactors will turn, turn on. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do that right now. So flip the switch turn these guys on. Now what I need to do and I need to be super careful here is I want to get the core temperature up to around 64 to 66%. I don't want to go any hotter because then it starts to give off bad effects like uh, it starts to enter the player, any players near it, it's, and then if it gets hotter yet it starts melting blocks, and then if it gets hotter yet they explode. So obviously we want none of that to happen, but I do want to get it as hot as I can. So 55, 57, we're close and maybe I should have left a touch sooner but let's see here 65 and sometimes you'll get some variation some of the reactors will be a little bit cooler like this one right here is at 63.36 versus most of them seem to be at 65.28 but that is completely fine um, they will produce just a little bit less power once we get the mox fuel in them but that's perfectly okay I would rather them be maybe a little bit cooler than optimal than too hot. So the next step here is I need to put the rest of the heat vents in these reactors. And I need these advanced heat vents right here. And actually, I don't think I have quite enough yet. But what I'm going to do is all of the empty spaces, they need these adv advanced heat vents. So what I'm going to do is I'm once again going to go off camera and I'm going to fill all of the reactors up with these advanced heat vents. And once I have that done, I will be right back. So now all of my nuclear reactors are configured and ready to go. The only thing is the energy has nowhere to go, so I'm not going to turn them on just yet. Uh, the next thing I need to set up is the automatic fuel insertion and extraction mechanisms. So for that, I'm going to use these ME interfaces that are kind of buried down here. Uh, on this one right here, I need to put a servo and... There we go, we have it in the correct spot. I'm going to do this in the round robin mode and it will be always on. Uh, so anytime this fuel is pulled out by the mechanism I'm about to set up, it will insert fresh fuel so the reactor can continue running. The next thing I need to do is I need to set up this retriever right here. 
and I need to be super careful. We are going to whitelist, um, and what we have to whitelist, I don't actually have yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put cobblestone in. So this thing won't pull anything out just yet because it can't. Uh, because it has, and I'm a little bit concerned about how that is looking. So let me take a look. Is that how that always looks? Let me grab another retriever. Because I'm concerned that it pulled something out and it's... Hmm. I'm very concerned it pulled something out accidentally. So what I need to do, because I'm worried about that, is I need to go around and check all the, of the reactors and make sure that they are properly configured here and that they don't have any extra fuel in them because if it did pull something out, that empty slot would have been replaced by a fuel rod here. And obviously that's not ideal because that reactor would explode because replacing one of the heat vents with an extra fuel rod would not work in this design no matter where it is okay so i'm not i haven't seen anything so far that's um out of place so that's good although if it was it would probably be one of the two reactors right beside the retriever so it would be this one or this one most likely okay so i'm not really sure why it's lit up like that but uh okay so we're just gonna turn this bad boy on and it shouldn't be able to pull anything out yet but that's completely fine let's make sure that uh i do want to make sure that there's nothing in my system over here that i missed if there's a heat vent in this system there's a problem okay so there's no heat vent in this system so that's cool it doesn't look like it pulled anything out it's just me being a little paranoid so the next thing I'm going to do in this episode, I'm going to go ahead and set up a mass fabricator system because I have plenty of time left, so let's go ahead and do it. So the mass fabricator system that I'm going to set up will, uh, and I need the matter fabricator, my bad, it's not mass fabricator anymore, it's the matter fabricator, and this system will allow me to make iron out of this UU matter stuff. So first off, let's go ahead and get the machines at least what we can. Uh, one of them, a few of them are actually kind of complex to make. So this right here, I have everything except the reinforced glass and the illuminator. The illuminator doesn't look to be too bad to make and the reinforced glass is not hard it itself. So let's go ahead and get this stuff in here. There's the matter fabricator. So scanner, uh, the matter fabricator setup will have four machines. You can actually do it with, uh, you could do it with two machines, I guess. You would need a scanner somewhere, but you don't necessarily need a scanner in the system. And I'll show you what I'm talking about a little bit later when I actually have it all, all up and going. So next would be the pattern storage. And that is right here. Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated. Uh, to make reinforced stone, I actually need CF powder and a CF sprayer. So let's get that stuff for first. So CF powder. And it's made like this. I don't have stone dust or clay in my system. How do I not have clay in my system? Okay, so I know, I know where I can get some clay. I'm going to need to get some clay. And the stone dust I can actually get from over here. I have it over there, so that's not a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and get some clay off camera, and once I have some of that, I will be right back. Okay, so I should have everything I need now to make my CF powder. So let's see here. CF powder. There we go, and that's made like that. I actually need to dump this stone dust into the system. And then I think I'm going to need eight of this to get started. I'm not 100% on that. So let's look at the CF sprayer. And I do want to make the full one eventually. So what we need first is a pattern like this. I do not have the universal cell made just quite yet. So let's go ahead and automate that. And then we can do the CF sprayer. That'll be made like that. 
And let's go ahead and get an empty one. Now, oh, whoops. I just need to tell it to make one. And hopefully that won't take but just a hot second here. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and cancel all these heat vents. That way I can go ahead and get this. Uh, obviously, I don't need the heat vents right now because I already have them made. At least the ones I need right now made. Now, to make the CF sprayer or to fill it, um, I should... I know the recipe is not showing up. But I should be able to dump a CF sprayer and eight of the CF powder into a canning machine. And it should spit it out as full. So the canning machine I need to use is this one right here. So let's see if it will do that. Actually, let's go ahead and set up the automation as well. So one CF sprayer, eight CF powder should be the recipe here. If we just throw this in, it should start filling it up. And once it gets full, it should put it in the output and then automatically kick to my ME system. So let's see if it does. Fantastic. That's what I thought. So there, we can have automatic full CF sprayers. So we need to find the correct canning machine here. Why are the canning machines not showing up? Oh, it's because they're this. They're labeled as the fluid solid canning machine. So I should need, yes, the the enrichment. Because the canning machines have two, two different settings. One of them is set to fluid enrich. One of them is just canning. I need the fluid enrich version. So yes, that should be good. If I go ahead and tell it to make another one of these, it should be able to go ahead and do that. So the next thing I actually need to need, make is some scaffolding. Sc scaffolding, not scaffolding. So I need the iron scaffolding, which is this right here. Uh, first off, I need to make iron fence, which is made with iron item casing in an extractor, or not extractor, metal former. So I need iron item casing, and let's go ahead and make a little bit of that. So what was the pattern? One to one, it is a one to one ratio. Okay, so our pattern will be There we go. So we should be getting some iron fence now. And then we can set up that automation in the metal former. And it is an extraction recipe. So cool. So next we can actually make the scaffolding. Scaffolding. And not the aluminum version. I need the... Where is it? There it is. So that's a pretty simple recipe. It's made like that. And I'm doing all this to make reinforced stone. I don't know if I mentioned that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab... I'm actually going to go ahead and grab 25. And that's because my flex bore can kill 25 blocks at a time. So let's get rid of that. Let's go outside, get some more area here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down in a 5x5 five five pattern. And what I can do is I can just left click on an existing scaffolding. And it will build, build up if it can. So that's pretty cool. And you can also climb this stuff. So it's it can be useful for like building stuff. So the next thing I need to do is I need to spray it with the CF powder. So I just do that by right clicking. And if I have uh, construction foam in there, it will use it. It uses 100 millibuckets per block. So the next thing I need to do is I need to either wait for this stuff to harden or I can manually harden it with sand. So I'm going to go ahead and manually harden it with sand. And then I will go ahead and harvest it. Now in an episode of Automate Everything, I actually automated this. And I think it's a really, really cool system. But um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Oh my goodness, this is going to take forever to harvest. Oh my goodness. I didn't think it took this long. But anyways, so uh, while we're doing this, this reinforced stone will be used in the pattern storage and then also in the replicator. And to make the pattern storage, I do need to do some stuff with clay dust, I believe, to make the 
the uh, disks that store the information. So here we go. We should have 25 of this now. My goodness, that took forever. So let's see here, pattern, storage. Okay, so next we need these crystal memories. And to make crystal memories, we'll need pulverized obsidian and silicon dioxide. To make silicon dioxide, I need clay dust. To make clay dust, I need to macerate clay. So let's get that going. I do have a little bit of clay left. I don't have a whole lot of clay left. So we'll need to macerate this. And let's do like half of it for right now. We will save the other half there. And then we'll get that going. Okay, so clay. The macerator is two clay dust. I couldn't quite remember the... Uh, uh, what, the, what the actual pattern was. So macerator... Okay, I did pick it up, I just didn't realize it. It's right down here. So there's the pattern for that, and then, okay, let's go back. Pattern storage, because I already forgot what I need to do with that. So uh, I need to make this silicon dioxide in the thermal centrifuge. So four clay dust makes a silicon dioxide. So clay dust, one, two, three, four. And the good thing is my thermal centrifuges, I did add some upgrades, so they are already hot. And so it should be able to plow through this clay dust pretty quickly. Unfortunately, I don't have any overclocker upgrades. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put... Okay, so do I... I don't have any with me, so I'm not going to do that. So... Okay, so we should get one silicon dioxide per. Okay, that's fantastic. And then this will go in the thermal centrifuge. Which will be down here somewhere. There it is. Very bottom. So next. Pattern storage. Next we can actually make this. I do have pulverized obsidian already automated. So obviously that's nice to have. And then we'll need one of these crystal memories. So what I need to do with the crystal memories, I actually need to smelt it. Uh, what I'm going to do, because that silicon dioxide has taken so long, I'm going to wait on that to cook up. And once that is all ready to go, I will be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and actually finished the crystal memory here. So now what I can do is I should be able to make the pattern storage. I think that was the last thing I needed to do, so there we go, that is the pattern storage. And then lastly, we'll need to make a replicator, or automate a replicator, actually, because I'm not actually making this stuff just yet. So let's get the replicator. And to make a replicator, there are a few things I need to make. First, I need to make an HV transformer. I think I have all of this done, except for the advanced RE battery here. So I need some lead dust. Uh, so, I actually need to go to, actually, there we go, I have some right here. So, that's the recipe for that, let's go ahead and get rid of that jetpack. And if I can get lucky here, actually, no. So, uh, let's go back to the replicator. And then do that. Okay, so what else do I need? I need teleporters. So first off, I need to make a frequency transmitter, which is actually pretty simple. And then do I have everything else for the teleporters? I think I might. Okay, I don't know why that's not allowing me to just do that, but that's okay. Okay, so next, replicator. Okay, what am I missing? MFE. I can make those. If I spell it right. I did go ahead and set up the batteries off camera, so I have, I am able to make MFSUs automatically and MFEs. Uh, this shouldn't take but just a second more. 
there we go so that is the replicator now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and tell my system to make two of each of these if I can I'm a little worried that I won't be able to actually make two of the pattern storages that's okay if I can't if I can't I can just come back another time and do that so actually I should be able to because I should be able to go back and make clay in a recipe like this. Uh, yeah, the only reason I might not be able to make the two pattern storages is because I don't have enough clay, but I can go ahead and make clay like that. So I should be fine. Okay, so I have the matter fabricators going. Let's get scanners going. Let's get the pattern storage going. And then the replicators. lead dust i knew that so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i need to set up a recipe to automatically pulverize lead dust but that's not a problem uh also i need to wait on all those machines to craft up and uh, after all the machines are done crafting up i will be right back okay so i am back in my nuclear reactor building i have all of the machines ready to go so let's go ahead and start setting them up uh first off i want to connect an mfsu next to these power lines right here and that's just to drain any residual power which apparently there is none because the reactors themselves don't actually have an energy buffer so that was, was just a good idea to check just anyways so let's start setting up our system the matter fabricators will go on the far ends uh, the scanners will go next to them. The pattern storage will go next to that. And then at the inside, the inside portion of the system will be the replicators. So the matter fabricator will actually make a liquid. So what I need to do is I need to get that liquid from the matter fabricator to the replicator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use inner fluid conduit and I'm just going to run it underneath like this. And we'll have this be extract always on and this one will be insert and then we need to do, to do the same thing over here so extract always on and then insert in addition um, on the scanners I need to put a block of iron ore in each of them as we can see right now uh, they do not have any power so it's not doing anything but that's fine um, on the matter fabricator and I think the replicator I need to add some transformer upgrades yes yes so I'm gonna add four to each of them I know I don't actually need that many but I have a bunch of transformer upgrades it's definitely better to have too many than not enough because if you don't have an, not if you don't have enough the machines will, may explode they will explode so finally this system will eventually be producing iron ore Actually, I think I can go ahead and turn this on. Yes, nothing exploded. That's good. So as we can see, it is getting power. It is functioning. Uh, one of the cool things about the matter fabricator is it kind of it can kind of eat up as much energy as you can throw at it. So it will be able to easily eat up this amount of power. Actually, I want to go ahead and get rid of this this energy cell or this uh, battery. So lastly, what I'm going to need to do is I need to set up an export bus for the matter fabricators and an import bus for the replicators. Today, I won't be using the export bus on the matter fabricators, but in the new future, I will be. So let's go ahead and set that up while we're here. So that'll just be a line right here. Actually, I'll have to go underneath to do a little bit of plumbing, but that's okay. Let's get the export buses. And like I said, today I won't actually be using them, but I will be in the future. So might as well set this up while I'm here. And then the import buses. The replicators will be making iron out of the UU matter. Iron ore, that is. So I need to import that into my main applied energistics system. Okay, so let's dunk that down below. That's already connected. This will run kind of in a zigzag pattern like that. And this will also run in that same zigzag pattern. So let's actually drop down here. Let's uh, bulldoze a hole in the wall so we can see what we're doing. And then we need to connect this up. So we're just going to use uh, regular cover cable here, or a black cover cable rather. We can just hook them up 
like that. And then uh, I did not do this zigzag here, but I should be able to do that from right here. And lastly, I want to facade up what I can. Uh, that's already done. And then I think we'll be just about done for today. So let's get some stone. Let's cover that back up. And then uh, grab facades and cover this back up. So one more thing I will need to do before this is completely automatic, and I can't do this right now, is I need to set up this here resonant retriever. It will need to have the depleted version of the fuel rod. And let me see if I can't find that. It'll need to have this in the whitelist, but right now I don't have any of them, so I can't set that up just yet. But that will be the automatic pulling mechanism. It will pull out depleted fuel out of the reactors. Now, this fuel does last something like five hours and, I don't know, 20-something minutes or something like that. It's five hours and something, but real world time, that is. So they last quite a while. So uh, in the meantime, we'll be making this UU matter, which flows over here. And uh, the iron ore is done scanning, so I need to hit save on the scanner. And then on the replicator, I need to scroll over to the iron ore and tell it to repeat run. So right now, it'll make some iron ore. It won't be a lot, um, but that's okay. Uh, once we add a scrap system for the matter fabricators, this will speed up considerably. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's a pretty good wrapping up point. In today's episode, I set up this building. I set up nuclear reactors in this building, and then I set up matter fabricator systems over here, which make iron ore. Right now, it's not a very good rate, but that's okay. In the future, it will be at a it will produce iron ore at a much much higher rate because I will swap out the fuel, and these reactors will produce a lot more energy. In addition, I will build a scrap factory probably in the near future that will provide scrap for the matter fabricator, which increases the rate at which the matter fabricator actually makes UU matter, which will be fantastic. So anyways, um, as of right now, I have, let's see, 10 million iron ingots. That's pretty fantastic. We are 1 one hundredth of the way there to 1 billion iron ingots. So anyways, if you liked today's episode, definitely give it a like. If you enjoy watching automation and modern Minecraft, Definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Anyways, signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and I will see you next time.